Hi guys, it's Julie with a quick video for you today. I shared a sneak peek on Instagram of this Mondo Gerbera Daisy where I had done some neon watercolor and people were asking me how I got that. So I just thought I'd share how I did it. I took some Canson 140 pound watercolor paper and I prepped it with an anti-static pouch and I used my tonic sweeper brush to sweep away the excess. I don't like to have too much of that powder sitting on the surface, but this will eliminate static clean and cling and help me get a much cleaner embossed image. So I'm going to ink up with a Versamark ink and I've got everything loaded there into the mini misty platform and I'm going to coat it with some white embossing powder. This is just a regular grind of white embossing powder and I'm going to heat that. I preheated my heat gun for about uh, 30 seconds and a word to the wise be patient after you've heat embossed everything just let it cool off. I had to do this twice because I got so excited that I swept my finger through the hot embossing powder. <laughs> so don't get over excited. And then I'm going to take an assortment of colors that I wanted to work with. These are the Clean Color Real Brush markers. And I find when I use these markers for watercolor effects, I really love to use them with embossed images. So I'm taking the tip of the brush marker here and I'm just hugging the embossing lines, kind of going around one area of them. I'm not even trying to trace around the whole thing. I'm just hugging one portion there in a tight spot because the medium to dark colors of these markers have quite a bit of saturation. And once you start to blend it out with water, you, it's a little bit is gonna go a long way. Let me just tell you that. So you wanna um, come back and add more if you need it. So don't get crazy in the beginning. Now with your pastel colors, that's a different story. But with the medium to dark, you wanna start out with a light hand and then come back and increase the saturation if you really need to. But I found that this worked really great. And then I'm just blending the color out with my Pentel Aquash. And when I move to a different area, I will uh, take some paper towel and clean off that pink color so I can do the green. It looks like I forgot to do my stem there. So I'm just going to add some of that really bright spring green and then some of that olive green there for shading. And you'll notice I'm not filling in the whole thing. I'm just going to let the water and that color there do the work for me. So I'm pretty much just smearing it around. <laughs> That's the Julie Ebersole method of watercolor. <laughs> and then I just clean off the brush tip uh, in between uh, changing areas where, you know, where there's a, a color shift. So I'm also noticing right here that I've got a lot of excess water sitting on the surface there. I'm just brushing the water right over the top of the embossing lines and it's going to saturate the watercolor paper. But if you get too much water on there, just wipe your brush against the paper towel and then wick up some of that excess water and wipe it clean and just do that until you're satisfied. So now it's really hard to capture this on video, but I'm using the fluorescent orange clean color real brush marker here to go into the center of those petals. I'm not going towards the tips on either end. I'm just kind of sticking towards the center there. And everything is dry at this point until I came in and started using uh, the fluorescent orange. And I'm just going to color in that midsection there of every petal. And then once I'm done, I'm going to take my water brush. I'm just testing to make sure I got enough water flowing there. I'm going to spread the color out and blend it in with the pink. Now I don't get too crazy because I don't want to water it down, but it is really hard to show on camera. It is so much brighter and more neon in real life than it picks up on camera. I really struggled with photographing it and checking out the video and I just could not pick up the true fluorescent nature of these markers when you do this. And you can use all fluorescent colors, but I find I like a blend of, uh, on this particular flower, I like to blend with a hint of the fluorescent. And I took my piece here and I made this really cute shaped card following Carly's video. And I'll have a link to her video down in the description so you can learn how to do it too. But when I saw her do this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try this too, because it was so cute and so clever of her. So be sure to check out Carly's video. And thanks for watching.